So my first day of work, they said, report to the Eastern District Courthouse. <coughs> in the courtroom is the trial of John Gotti, because the sentences were life without parole if they were convicted. Welcome to the Andrea Giovino Show. I have such a special guest on tonight, not just a guest. She was my attorney back in 1992 when I met her, one of New York's finest, and became a very dear friend of mine, Bettina Shine. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here, Andrea, on your show. Thank you. So I wanted to give the audience an idea just about you, like how you started with your career and, you know, when I met you, um, I remember you were working along with Bruce Cutler and Barry Slotnick and you were involved in a lot of the mob cases, the criminal cases, and were good at it. And then eventually I used you for my case also. So tell me a little bit about how you met these people. Well... Uh, I started out, in fact, my first day at work, I was hired by the law offices of Slotnick and Cutler, Barry Slotnick and Bruce Cutler. So my first day of work, they said, report to the Eastern District Courthouse in Brooklyn. Uh, there's a trial going, uh, trial starting, and they told me what courtroom to go to. So I put on my blue gray suit, <laughs> my first day working oh, as God. a lawyer. I'm, I had just taken the bar, and I didn't know if I was admitted yet to the bar. And I go to the courtroom, and Judge Nickerson is the judge, and in the courtroom is the trial of John Gotti. Wow. Along with uh, John Corniglia and um, other people. Now, did you know well. who John Gotti I, was? I did not. I okay. didn't know who any of these people were. Okay. So I sat down uh, next to Barry Slotnick and John Coniglia, his client, and he introduced me to Judge Nickerson, and uh, he's a new lawyer, and Judge Nickerson wishes me well. He was a lovely, patrician uh, gentleman judge. And then um, they started discussing uh, jury selection and other evidentiary issues. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that was my first day on the job. And then I know as the years went on, you worked on a lot of cases with Bruce Cutler. I, I did. I did. I, I really, as they say, cut my teeth on mob cases. <laughs> uh, other organized crime-related cases that I worked on with Bruce Cutler and... Um, because I, I remember in when I got arrested in September 9th, 1992, you were very much a part of his office. because Well, we, I was off counsel to you, Bruce at yeah. that point. I worked for the firm for about two and a half years. Then I went out on my own, and then Bruce called me, said, do you want to work with me? I said, I'll be of counsel to your law office, and I was of counsel to Bruce Cutler. He was involved in many of the major cases at that time. Yeah. So A lot of the mob cases, a uh, lot of people oh, like... A Used lot of him. them, yes, 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 a lot of those cases. I guess because, you know, people felt that he did so well, you know, with that. Yes. Everybody's like, uh, you know, he was like the it lawyer. He was, he was. He was very, very uh, well known at the time. And he had a big personality in the courtroom. He would range around in the courtroom and jurors loved to hear what he had to say. And there were spectators in the courtroom as well. They came to watch him. And I remember when I got arrested in uh, September 9th, 1992, I was completely frazzled, as you know. You know, I remember I, very well, Andrew. I remember I was sent down to represent you. Yes. And you were beside yourself. You were crying. And I introduced myself to you in 1992. And you said, Bettina, I have babies at home. And they came to my house 6 o'clock in the morning uh, with their guns drawn to search the house. Oh, it was horrible. And you said, I have two babies at home. And and I think you said, thankfully, the neighbors came to take care of the, the, well, the young yeah. children. Well, I mean, I think that, well, I think it was 17 agents busted into the house like 6 o'clock in the morning with they do uh, two little babies and, and my other two children, which were uh, 10 and 15 at the time. So there were four kids in the house. But... You know, that was a very traumatic time. Of course. You, you know, you remember that was such a traumatic time for me where, you know, you think that, you know, life is going smoothly and, you know, you're in the streets and people in the streets think like, you know, they're never going to have a downfall. Just like, actually, as these mob guys think, they never think that, you know, the downfall is going to come until it comes 
and it, it slams you and it hits you in the face. That's right. And back then, I remember when I was arrested, was um, there was a lot of stuff in the paper about because it was John Gotti's case, and I think that was right around the time um, after I I got arrested after Gotti and Sammy Gravano cooperated and all of that. Right. So right. you know, once Sammy cooperated, people were like a lot of people, as you know, and as an attorney, was snowballing. You know that. You, you started cooperating when, prior to that, people didn't cooperate in organized crime cases. But after that, people started cooperating because the sentences were life without parole if they were convicted. And and, and I I think, like, yeah, going back to that, and, and plus that was right, like, around the 80s when they came up with the RICO, which I was charged with the RICO, as you know. Right. Um, and, and you and you were, you were charged with, at the time... Having a book, in other words, you had loans out on the street, yes. and that's that's what they charged you with. You and were charged in this very big. There were about thirty-two defendants charged mm -hmm. in your case, and it was a uh, marijuana and cocaine importation, and there were a few murders, murders in, the case, in the case, as I recall. But was, then also, I was arrested because they said they had wiretaps of me giving instructions. If you remember, right. that I gave instructions to the guys to go up and hurt that Joe Florenza. Because he owed a lot of money from the book. <laughs> from your book. Right. It was your book. You right. had money out in the street that you were lending. And that that was your crime. Right. That you had this big book out there. Right. Looking back now, like people like always want to, and you being an attorney, you can understand this more than anything. They, um, they'll say, oh, this one's a rat or that one's a rat or this one. You can't judge anybody until you're in those person's shoes. You can't. And like you said, back then they were giving out life sentences. Life without, without parole. Without parole. There was no, it's not like in state court where if someone commits a murder and let's say they are sentenced to 25 to life, they appear before the parole commission when they hit 25 years. But in the federal system, there's no parole commission. If someone gets life without parole, that means they are in jail for the rest of their life until, and they die in jail. Yeah, and that's a lot to take, especially in the <laughs> sure streets is. when you really don't have anybody loyal to you. Right. You know, I know when I was arrested, nobody was there. Nobody well, was there. My husband was already incarcerated, and they expedited him back that's to right. MC, he had been in he, Tennessee doing an eight-year right. bid. So he wasn't had, somebody that would ever cooperate. He well, didn't want to cooperate. Right. He was in Tennessee, and right. he was serving a sentence, if I recall uh, correctly, for marijuana distribution. A hundred pounds of marijuana right. back then. And he was serving a pretty substantial sentence for yes. that. There was no violence in that case. No. And then he was brought up into the Eastern District case, the federal case, right. and charged there as well. And and he's he was serving a sentence, he was brought up by the marshals, and right. then he appeared to be arraigned on the Eastern District case. So when faced with that, and you were arrested as well, and you had babies at home as well as two older children. There's no choice. There wasn't really a choice. No, there really wasn't a choice. And I think that, you know, and, and thank you, Jesus, you know, that I was able to be with my children. And in turn, they dropped me from the case they, with all expungement. Right. They, they, they took you out of the case. They, they took me off the indictment. They took you off the indictment. Uh, with nothing on my record, I never had. That nothing. was the, that they was dismi they, they right. dismissed the case. Yeah, they dismissed the case against you, and that was the end of your case. Right, that was it. But they they I remember that they asked you if you wanted to enter the witness protection program, and you said no. I am not changing my name. I am not entering the no. witness protection program. No, and I wasn't program. going. And to, you weren't co cooperating. I either. wasn't going to cooperate, and I wasn't going to go with Ross Perlson at the time. If you remember, he was trying to pressure me. Yes, and I was like, I'm not going with anybody. I want to stay neutral, and I wasn't going into witness protection. Right. So and you, you, you never did. No, and the only reason that. They said I had to be relocated, which they relocated me was because, and it wasn't the marshals, they said because there was the contract out on my life that people went to prison for that, that then I would be putting the kids in danger. Of course, you had no choice. I had, had no choice with that either, or they would have taken my kids again because they would say negligence, the kids could get killed. Because right, so back you... then, if you remember, I think it was a gas pipe or whatever, they put a contract out on somebody's uh, sister with the kids in the car. Um, 
Well, there were there, there was were, a lot of stuff. There were a lot of uh, murders. That was Anthony Castles, and there were exactly. a lot, there were a lot of uh, murders charged in that case. I didn't represent anyone in that case. Right. But, but, remember but that. there was a lot going on. So back then, they didn't really care about a woman. They didn't care, like, it's not like today, there's cameras everywhere, and, right. you know, you really can't get away with anything. Um, it was very scary. Oh, for sure. It was it a very was scary. scary time. So you ended up moving to Pennsylvania. I moved to Pennsylvania and started my entire life over, which was extremely hard for me. Hard. It was so hard. hard. And you had been raised in... Uh, Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, in... in uh, family that you know i remember you telling me that your mom was running card running, games running for, for card joe gallo games, card games downstairs yes. to earn extra money exactly so you and, know. and and at least one of your brothers was involved in yes uh, organized well crime. yeah my brothers were like i come from a family of street people they were all in the streets but i think that um you know being comfortable with those men because that's all I really knew, was right. to be comfortable with those men. And I think that the consequence and the downfall is way too big, you know, you know, and I think I really wanted to start a podcast basically for as we get into the podcast and as we go through it, have more and more women on that can understand that admire this in any culture. It could be and it's not just sure. Italian culture, that it's if you don't like you can't put your identity, which I had did, into a man or expect from the man because when you expect, you'll be disappointed. You and, ha right, you have to always have your own agency and have uh, and be independent mm -hmm. and know that you have to be able to take care of yourself. Yeah, but I do think when I was arrested, just having a female attorney like you that not only was a great attorney, like you were with a, a firm that was re very recognized and a tough little tiny thing. <laughs> and yeah. not only that, being that person, fight for me, you had the compassion as a woman, which men don't have. It's true. It's, it's the rare man that has very, very rare, rare, very, rare very rare, very rare, very rare. It's, I mean, it's hard to find, but you, you, you're right. I mean, uh, you know, sometimes during my career, like I had, um, I represented uh, uh, one of the guys that was in the um, uh, the arena cases, and in, so the that's client, a mob case. A mob case it was a mob case, and and uh, um, it was two brothers, the arena brothers, and and uh, someone came to me and they said this client would like a woman attorney, um, and he said, and I know, and I and I know that a woman can help me. That? Better than a, a male attorney. A woman can help me. So I began representing him. He was a very nice client. Yes. I, I mean, and, I, and I think, though, that's very because... nice. And, and you know what? All the men were acquitted. Wow. They were all acquitted. And he would say to me sometimes, he'd say, oh, I like the suit you're wearing. He was like a, 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 you know, a lovely, very polite gentleman. Oh, I, li I like that, you know, so sometimes I would wear um, bright colors so mm -hmm. that if I had to get up and make an argument or course examine someone, the jurors would be looking at me right. and saying, oh, she's up there and I want to hear what she has to say. say. Yes, very <laughs> smart yeah. to get yeah. the attention. Yeah, that's right. Right. And so I think that, I think the personalities of you and I, you just coming from an other end of it, being on the law and me coming from the criminal end, but both of us being so tough and having strong personalities. Yes. Where I'm even in a genre now, men don't understand that. That's right. They can't understand they can't that. can't understand. But you, I mean, you were, you were so, well, you were ambitious and you were tough. I mean, to have a book out among, there were no other women who were participating in any organized crime activities, but there you were with a book out. I know, but people say, no, that's not so. <laughs> but that's what you... But that's, that's what, what the were facts I was charged with. That's what you were charged with. I know, I know, but I... Were lending money I know. at high and, interest rates. And then, of course, when you have that, you have to have people backing you. Of, co of course. You can't... You can't <laughs> for, the, for anyone to think that you would go out by yourself... Uh, it's we're crazy. We're talking about in the late 80s <laughs> yeah. and early 90s, and you would just be on the street putting money out... And with nobody backing me. With no one backing you and no one saying, uh, 
you know, you can do that, you can't do that, or, you know, that's great, you're doing that, but we're going to back you. You, you, you. It was unheard people, of. It's un, well, it would have never happened. It would have never happened. It's not how things worked back then right. among organized crime figures. It just doesn't happen. So you had the imprimatur to go out and have your book of loans out on the street. Right. So, yeah, and but there was a big from, consequence for that. You know, I've learned from that. Course, I've changed I mean. from that. And I try to bring to the public, especially women that um, go through that or, or, or with men in that way. And, and it is attractive when you come from a background like I did with no education, p poverty, right, right. you see someone that's going to give you a better lavish life. You're not thinking of the consequence they're going to get arrested and face prison time or maybe get killed. Right. You, you don't really think of that. So I think this podcast is, I would like to, you know, make women understand more so that it's not a good life. It's not a glamorous life. It's a doggy dog world. At the end of the day, no one's there for you. No one. No one's coming for you. And that's why I like to stay neutral on if people decide to take and go to trial and fight their case and see which way they're going to go, or people that decide to cooperate, there is no judgment because you don't nope. know until you're part of what happens to you. No one's going to say what they're going to do until they're faced with that time and what the judge is going to say. You were a mother. You had four children. I had no loyalty to anybody but my kids. But your, and I but say your that kids. openly. And, and you didn't cooperate, but you had the father of your children cooperate and your brother. Yeah, but I because I wasn't going to be charged with murders and everything that they were involved with that had nothing to do with me. I was trying to survive. And you couldn't risk going to prison not for the you had children at home to no. take care of no and i think that back then you know um i was really lucky that the the prosecutor ross pearlson decided that you know what we don't really want her we want them right and and to have a, a you know to have a, a woman in the case with four children just garners a little, you know, you garner sympathy yeah. from the yeah. judge or the probation officer. And I was so young. And you were very young at the time. Yeah, and, and you know, you do make a lot of mistakes when you're young. You don't know any better. Right, your judgment and having not had the benefit of of finishing school. high school even. I, middle school, Patina, finished, seventh grade. I mean, it's it's mind-boggling I mean, that you stopped school at seventh grade, so not even, not even attending high school, let alone going to college. Where Losing out on all of all that. All of that, where, where, and you're very smart, and, and you, you, you have a natural aptitude in addition to being very smart. So imagine what you would have done yes. had you had the opportunity to, you know, graduate high school and go on to college. You know, you could be the CEO of some company. Thank you. Thank you. You really could. So I now mean, I'm the CEO of me. Right. <laughs> my, that's right. My company, Andrea Giovino. That's right. Branding her. Yeah. So basically. Um, I mean, you wrote a book. I wrote a you, book. You wrote a book done, about your life. I mean, life. I sat with Barbara Walters. Right. I've done the 60 Minutes. I've done a lot with my life. That's right. Notwithstanding, I mean, it's, it's I must say, it's remarkable how far you've gone having written Thank the you. book, having been interviewed on all these shows and, and uh, having your own podcast. Thank uh, you. You know, all of this, you've, you've done a lot. Yeah, and I keep going and I keep trying and I keep staying yes. the course, especially with it's still, I'm still with a lot of men, but I want to try to gear off to that and then go into, like I said, you know, putting out a lot of more positive stuff for women and working okay. with women and having other women that have been through what I've been through come on the show. Well, you're a wonderful example of that yeah. to see to how... To change. To change and to see how you completely turned your life completely around. Completely turned you, you it around. completely went on a different path, notwithstanding... Not and even going to high hard. school. Change is very it's hard. very hard. It's People very are comfortable. very hard. Because you're comfortable are, they with are. what you are. What you know. No. Yes. But it's so hard to change, but it's growth. You grow. And right. then when you see That's you're right. starting to grow and you're starting to develop into the person you're really supposed to be, you know. It's, it's I, worth, I think, all the hard work is worth it. I think today I'm in one, I'm in 
one of the best places I've ever been with age. I really do. I think I'm comfortable in my skin. I could care less what people think of me. It's, it doesn't matter. It's what I think of me and what my children think of me and my grandchildren. So I think that's where I'm at today. Like, I don't need to explain to anybody who I am. You know, I, I believe that, um, you know, to get to a point of where I'm at, I'm very grounded with my church. I thank God every day. I, I'm blessed to have, you know, the Lord in my life and, and make me the person that I am today. So, And you're blessed with children. And, oh, my God. And t- you have two wonderful grandchildren. Two beautiful grandchildren and one on the way. And one on the way. And we are a so very that's... tight-knit, close family. And that's wonderful. And, and your daughter and the grandchildren live near they you. Live cl- I see them every day. So see, I'm that's, le- that's wonderful in itself. And I enjoy that. Fortunate. I enjoy that. You know, sometimes I'm exhausted. <laughs> but, um, you know, more or less in the summertime, they come to me a lot because I have the property in the pool and the kids love to swim. And in the winter time, it's cold. I go to her more, so um, it works out really nice. We have a great. My daughter and I are like best friends. We we get along wonderful. You're very very so, and fortunate. And with my sons, my sons also. You know, I know. all all, all, my all your kids, children. My kids are wonderful, and we're all very grounded. You know, yes. spiritually with our religion. You know, being practicing Catholics, we're a practicing Catholic family. You know, and and you know, you pray together, you stay together. You know, we always say that always when we're together, my son always, my oldest son always, before we eat, he leads prayer, very which nice. is very nice. Very and, nice to and be we're thankful. Very, I think thankful and I think the word humble, humble. Yes. I'm very humble. And I'm someone, if I can help you, I will always help you. I will always lend a hand. I will always help the next person and lift them up. I'm not there to knock people or say terrible things about somebody. And that's very hard for me, Patina, because I was raised to fight back. I was raised mm. where my mother would say, don't come in this house crying, because if you come in this house crying, I'll make you cry worse. So when someone attacks me, my instinct is to go back and hurt. But I've learned that's not the right way to be. It's not, because that's not the way, If that, that's going to make me more of a hypocrite, because I'm right. supposed to be practicing what how Jesus walked and how Jesus lived, and how am I going to hurt somebody with my words or with right. whatever? I have kindness, to, be kindness, nice and kindness, and be humble and, and be, be humble. grateful, right. humble, kind, grateful for what you just for what you continue have. Continue to be kind and be grateful that what I have today, you know, every day I'm grateful for that. The most is is health. You know, right. you know, oh, absolutely. I, we hear so much sickness and so much that's going on that health is the most important thing. Most important thing. But I feel separate and apart from you being, you know, a great attorney. Um, and a lot of people know you in, in like the, the mob genre because you've worked along with some big names and stuff like that. <laughs> right. Very big names. Um. Well, I'll tell you a funny story. <laughs> so I had a, a client. He was um, uh, a French uh, fraudster. Okay? Oh. So his name <laughs> okay. was Chris, uh, Christophe Rocancourt. He went by different names, and he was uh, he defrauded people in a sort of charming way, if you will. So, uh, so he called. Uh, he, I was of counsel to Bruce at the time and he called Bruce and Bruce said, Bettine, do you want to handle this case? I said, okay, I'll I'll handle it. And I went out uh I went out to see him. He was out in Suffolk County where he had defrauded some inn owners and had big oh, wow. dinners and he purported to be who he wasn't, but he was good at doing that. And um and and I appeared before the judge uh out there and and it's a very small community out there, and and I asked the judge to set bond for him, of maybe uh, twenty five thousand dollars. I'm going to grant bail. Uh, I think she granted fifty thousand dollars bail, <laughs> and they posted bail. Uh, his his wife at the time brought it to the sheriff's office, and he got out of. Uh, he, he was released on bail, and a, a day or two later. Someone runs up with a big bouquet to my office, 
And it's you know from Christopher. Thank you, Bettina, for getting me out of, uh, you know, for, for uh, getting bond for me. And then he fled. He went to British Columbia, and he uh, did the same thing up there. Oh God! Uh, but in any event, so eventually he was caught and he was prosecuted. And we appeared before Judge Sifton, who was a wonderful judge. He's since passed away in federal court. And uh, I promised the judge that he wouldn't be involved in this mischief anymore. <laughs> and he sentenced him to like three or four years in jail. But he, he was sent because the I don't know if the prosecutor thought he should have gotten a, a stiffer sentence. So he sent him one of the penitentiaries. And when he was in there, one of the mob guys said to him, who was your attorney? He goes, <laughs> Bettina Shine. So he said, okay, come sit by me then. You, know, you can, <laughs> sit, like with, you can sit with us. Yes, and, she's uh, one of us. Right, right. We know her. She's a great attorney. Right. You, can sit, you can sit with us. And then when he got out, uh, um, one of the shows followed him and went on the plane with him, and he went back to France, and he started doing something akin to that in France. Wow. Yeah. But, okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway, but that's how they, they did know me and yes. some of the oh, guys yes. who were in serving much stiffer sentences in the Rokin court, um, they knew me. <laughs> well, I'm really, really happy you came on. You know I love you. I love you as a friend also, and, not and just you, as a... And you, uh, I love you as a friend. <laughs> so is there anything you would like to say before we close out? Uh, no, I think we've covered, covered a lot. Covered a and, lot. And... Um, it's been fun. Thank you. Thank you. Please subscribe to the Andrea Giovino channel. Uh, leave a comment and we'll see you next time. Thank you.